I would like now to invite um, to the stage the leader of a country that is the beacon of commitment to the European project. Please join me in welcoming the President Marie-Louise Colera Preca of Malta. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning, everyone. And I too would like to apologize if I give my back to some of you. I'm not really so used to going around on a stage, but I love the setting. However, well, dear Clara and Chiara, first of all, thank you for bringing together once again such a distinguished gathering for a very important purpose, to share and give visibility to important issues for all of us. It is truly my pleasure to address the Women's Forum and to contribute in the discussion regarding the chosen team daring to lead in a disrupted world. During the last Women's Forum held in Rome, the topic of my contribution centered around issues of security and peace within an overarching theme of revitalizing Europe with women's energy for peace and prosperity. This previous theme chosen for the Women's Forum in Rome is naturally connected to today's deliberations. I am convinced that today we will continue to deepen our important discussions, which are so relevant to the daily lives of our communities and societies. Let me therefore begin by saying that the role of women's leadership to guide the necessary transformation of our institutions and societies must take place as a part of a collaborative effort which should embrace all of the stakeholders within our countries. I believe that though the world is passing through a bleak period, we must stand up to the challenges that are being felt across our world. We must pluck up courage to take effective action, to implement strategies that ensure gender equity, equality, and full inclusion. We must find the ways to take the necessary concrete steps to capitalize on this changing global situation. We all know that populism has reasserted itself in many of our countries as an unfortunate response to perceived threats and a sense of unease, which this disruption and uncertainty is causing across the world. We are living in a world that is experiencing great changes due to new patterns of human, human movement. As a result of armed conflicts, deep-rooted poverty, the challenges of precarity, and drastic changes in the world's climate. Women and girls are acu acutely suffering from the consequences of armed conflict, which is resulting in much higher rates of gender-based violence. Women and girls are rendered vulnerable to poverty and precarity due to the loss of jobs and the destruction of vital assets, such as lack of proper educational opportunities and basic shelter. Essential health services are also severely affected, which is creating spikes in maternal mortality rates. In fact, the most recent data from UN Women reports that the rate of maternal mortality is 2.5 times higher in conflict and post-conflict areas. Women and girls are often on the run to escape conflict-affected countries. Mass displacement of people has become the order of the day. According to the United Nations Refugee Agency, women comprise nearly half of all refugees worldwide. Research shows that gender is a major factor which creates higher risks for women and girls in such situations. Let me therefore encourage you to take this opportunity during this forum to respond to some questions which I would like to pose to stimulate further thoughts. What sort of safe spaces can we create to listen to the voices of women and girls within our institutions? 
how can we empower women and girls to become effective activists for sustainable change? How can women and girls become the strong agents of their own freedom? What concrete efforts can we make for increased female leadership? I believe that our strategies to promote women's leadership must aim to have an effect on all levels of political, social, and economic life to ensure the necessary successful transformation that is much needed in this disrupted world. We must address the social, cultural, political, and economic marginalization, which is currently being experienced by too many of our girls and women. Let us not be alienated and forget that each of our countries is affected by, by these issues, including developed economies. We surely cannot forget to indicators from the World Economic Forum, which states that it shall take some 170 years to achieve meaningful gender parity on a global scale if we keep the same pace of today. It's truly worrying. It is clear that in order to pursue the goals of gender equity and equality within our institutions, we must first find effective strategies for the reforming of our systems. We must challenge our status quo, which unfortunately is maintaining and sustaining the marginalization of some individuals and groups and which gives privileges to others. We must be bold and take practical and timely measures to reform these systems that are not working to ensure equity, equality, and full inclusion in our societies. I truly believe that we must do much more. We must, each and every one of us, working together, continue to give visibility to such issues to ensure that the international community is further committed to its utmost, to do its utmost, to provide the necessary effective systems for the much needed positive outcomes for our societies everywhere. We must create and free up spaces of frank and honest discussion about equal gender representation across the entire structures of our organizations and institutions at every level of engagement. I am convinced that in this context, women would feel more secure in the fact that their voices are being heard and their participation is truly being valued. Furthermore, we must hold people in positions of authority accountable for the decisions that they make within an institutional setting. We cannot accept that certain decisions remain hidden or go unexplained, especially if they are affecting the lives of women and girls. We must highlight the importance of transparency and encourage an environment of sharing and support within our institutional structures to ensure full, equitable, equal, and inclusive societies. For example, the 2016 UN Security Council's report of the Secretary General on Women, Peace, and Security tells us that seven out of 10 peace agreements signed in 2015 included gender-specific provisions. However, data from a report entitled Women's Participation in Peace Negotiations, quoted by UN Women, tells us that only 2% of chief mediators, 4% of witnesses and signatories, and 9% of negotiation, negotia negotiators involved in peace processes were women. This highlights a deep contrast between the fact that peace agreements, which include gender-specific provisions, were reached without the full and equitable participation of women. In this context, fora such as the one we are participating today gives us an essential platform to reach such aims. And once again, I thank Clara and Chiara for making this happen. We must acknowledge gender diversity as a vital contributor to the successful of all our institutions and across our societies. Respecting gender diversity will not only help our societies, but also our economic sectors. 
women must be encouraged to share their talents and expertise as valued collaborators within a unique contrib contribution to make across all facets of life. In order to make these goals a reality, I believe that we must first and foremost find ways of making, making gender equity, equality and inclusion an issue which is embraced by everybody. I believe that we must continue to invest in research-based data which empowers people to understand the net benefits that a shift towards gender equality can have in our social, political, and economic lives. We must promote strategies for resilience and solidarity, the road towards achieving gender equality and respect for diversity is difficult. This is why the celebration of gender diversity is a designated goal of the United Nations Agenda 2030 with its sustainable development goals. Goal number five commits our nations to achieve gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls by 2030. This goal can only be achieved when we call for deep-rooted reforms of our institutions so that they reflect the depth of our aspirations for equality, equity, and respect for diversity. Thanks to this United Nations framework, we know what must be done. So let's do it. Thank you.